This is W5HRO. I got around to doing more work on this today and I've got everything powered up. I had the 4400 CG lit up as you can see and the 1625 is going as well. You can probably see the glow from down there. And I'll come up here and you can see both the tubes. Right there they are. The big one and the uh, 1625 clamp tube on the uh, right side. And um, I've got most everything wired up. I've got to add the one the voltage divider cap for the screen, for the screen, you know, screen modulation. And it's going to go through that strap to the one to ground. So the, the center point of the divider will be the, the screen strap, which is perfect. And uh, right now I don't have the relay engaged. I'm clipped on from the chassis to the, uh, the, uh, the grid connection on the 4400. And I'm seeing about, what is it? Get rid of the glare here. About minus two point some odd volts. Now if I engage the relay, if I hit the selector switch, and see there it is, now it's the relay's engaged, I'm getting about minus, minus 99, minus 100 volts. It's moving around a little bit. I need to, I need to add the regulation on the main supply connection to the rheostats. But I need to figure out where the voltage is supposed to be first. So it works. I can go from, you know, it'll be, I did add the grid leak resistor on the, the relay there. That's an 18K 20 watt job. So that's the grid leak bias for, for class C AM mode for AM operation. Then, you know, when I, the, the relay's engaged, there it's not engaged. That'll be on the resistor. And it'll drop down like minus 200, minus 200 volts with the grid drive applied. And then when I click this, engage the relay, it will have a fixed supply, which I'm going to, I don't know where it's supposed to be yet. It's supposed to be anywhere from like minus 75 to minus, you know, 150. It could be anywhere in between there. And by some weird chance, it could be a little bit lower than minus 75. But uh, the specs I have on this tube are for it to, to 2,500 volts. And my plate supply is only like 2125. So it's a little bit low, so I don't know exactly where the, the uh, grid bias supply is going to be for the uh, 4400 yet. Now, if I don't shock myself here, if I can get a hold of this real quick, I'll just take the clip off and go up here to the uh, 1625 grid connection. I have it set right now to like a minus 191, minus 200. You know, it's it keeps moving around on me, so I, I need to regulate the supply. I just don't know which regulator to use yet. I just have to figure out where everything needs to be, where the 4400 grid is supposed to be for the right AB bias, and where the, the, the 1625 grid voltage needs to be to uh, get the right amount of clamp. So the, uh, the, the 0D3 regulators that are going to plug there don't, don't have you know excess current. Because when I go down to the AB bias, when I switch the grid, control grid to AB bias from like minus 210 or minus 200 to like minus say 75, the voltage on the, the screen regulation is going to want to come way up. So I've got to adjust the clamp to pull it down a little bit so it doesn't run away. So the, cur the current on the tube stay okay. That's the whole point of doing the 1625 biasing too with the relay as well as the 4400 control grid. And if I uh, uh, turn off the relay and go back to Class C mode, see there's nothing. There's just a dead short between the uh, uh, 1625 control grid and the uh, 4400 control grid. It's just dropping down to where it was without the voltage on it. If I go over here to the uh, 4400 grid, it'll be the same. See, it's, it's, it's creeping back down again to like minus... Minus, you know, 1.9, minus 2 volts, something like that. It's, on average, it's about there. See, it jumped around on me. I, it's the actual tube that's moving around. Once, once it has the plate supply voltage on everything, it'll stabilize everything out with the screen voltage on it. It'll, it'll probably quit moving around as much. There's a good chance that maybe the, reg, the regulation will stay put, but I'm not 100% I'm not positive yet. So anyway, I got that all working. And there's the uh, two... Uh, one meg resistors I was talking about. So just in case the wipers, if you know, if the these rheostats were to open up, they'd uh, at least I'd have something. At least the grids would have a, a path to ground. The control grids on both tubes would have a path to ground. So I did that just to be on the safe side, just so it you know they're not going to be floating. 
So anyway, uh, that's it. And uh, I, one thing I left off the first video is I need to add the uh, the, uh, the doorknobs back here for the, uh, the loading caps on the output network. There's the one big tuning cap, the loading cap. It's not really a tuning cap, it's a loading cap for the output of the Pi network to the, uh, to the uh, you know, coax output, the SO239. And uh, that's a uh, 38 to minimum, the 467 puff maximum. So I just need to add the doorknobs in parallel one at a time. I'm just going to drill a hole, mount the doorknobs right here. I have plenty of room to add one at a time. And they'll be connected to the uh, selector switch here on the front panel. That's the other one, see, and it just, that's the actual switch out of a Johnson KW Matchbox. That's what I used years ago, see? Right now they're all shorted, and right now they're open. So that's what I was using to short the door, across the doorknobs to add more capacitance in parallel with the, with the variable loading cap. So that's it, and uh, I should have this thing uh, slid back in the rack sometime here soon. Maybe if not next week, if not next weekend, probably the week after. So that's it. This is W5HRO.